Here is another screencast on the chemistry of life. So we've been talking about atoms and bonds and water, and we've started to look at how this is all related to how we stay alive, how it relates to the food that we eat. And so we're going to take this just a little bit up further, one step further, go back to that juicy ham hamburger we zoomed into in the first video, and ask the question, where does that juicy hamburger go? What happens? How does it keep us alive? What does our body do to it? Well, what happens is our body must break down that food through a series of chemical reactions. So you might be wondering, what the heck is a chemical reaction? Well, it's simply when you have one reactant uh, kind of combining with another reactant. This reaction takes place and we have a new and different product that is formed. Now I said it was simple, but really it's not that simple. Let's take just a closer look at what chemical reactions are. We're not going to get too in depth because next year in chemistry you're going to learn all you ever wanted to know about chemical reactions. But what's happening is, is the bonds of the reactants are actually being broken and then during the reaction they're reformed a little bit differently to make the new product. So it's all about bond breaking and bond making. And here's an example. This is actually the example of how your body uh, makes ATP. You take in glucose or sugars. You also need to breathe in oxygen. And we're going to talk a lot more about this uh, in the next couple units. And the chemical reaction takes place. And instead of having the atoms bonded and arranged this way, we now break those bonds and rearrange them to make carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So that's what a chemical reaction is. And you don't have to know that reaction now, but eventually you will have to know that reaction. Now there's a catch. Most reactions in our body take a very, very long time to occur because they re require a certain amount of input energy to get started. Even in this example, you have to, in the very beginning, input a little bit, little bit of ATP energy to break those bonds, to get things started. Um, so how does our body overcome this necessity of, of accumulating energy uh, to get reactions started? We can't wait forever to digest our food, right? Well, the answer is our body has enzymes. Um, and so enzymes are biological catalysts. So a catalyst is simply something that speeds up a reaction, so it does do that. And then biological simply means that it's contained within a living system, so like our bodies. So what enzymes do is they lower that amount of initial energy, we call it the um, energy of activation, to get that reaction started. So let's take a look at this graph here. This will make a lot more sense after you see this. So here are our reactants, and we're trying to get to our products, right? Well, in red, without an enzyme, it's going to take a whole bunch of energy initially to get that started, okay? So here's energy over here. But when we add an enzyme, look how that amount of initial energy is lowered. We don't have to put that much energy in to get it started. Therefore, we don't have to wait as long for, it to, for the energy to accumulate, and the reaction simply goes faster. So that's what enzymes do. They lower that amount of initial energy required to get that reaction going. Now let's learn a little bit, about, a little bit more about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins, and we haven't quite learned about what a protein is yet, but we will next week. They're substrate specific, meaning the active site is only going to recognize a certain molecule. Now you're probably like, what's a substrate? What's an active site? Well, let's take a look over here at this picture. So the substrate is in green. This is just simply the molecule or the reactant uh, that the enzyme is going to work on. And then the active site is just simply the portion of the enzyme where the substrate or that reactant binds. And notice that it's specific. It's shape specific. So this part will fit in here, and this part fits in here. So they are substrate specific for, uh, for the shape of the active site. Uh, enzymes are not used up in a reaction. So once an en enzyme does its thing, it's ready to go again, and it can do that same reaction over and over and over again. So they're not used up in a reaction. And enzymes are usually named with the ending, the suffix of ASE, ACE. And so an example of that is uh, lactase, so ASE. And what this does is it breaks up the sugar lactose into two smaller sugars. So a lot of times the substrate will be the beginning part of the enzyme name, so lactose. Okay. 
one more uh, figure here about how enzymes work and hopefully this will put it all together for you. So we're going to start over here. Just here's our enzyme with our active site. Here's our substrate. And the substrate's going to bind to the active site. We now call this the enzyme substrate complex. Now some interesting things are going to happen at this little active site. The enzyme is going to ch you know, break some bonds, uh, reform bonds, change the reactant, and then what happens is that now we have some products. Now you might have just one product, but in this example, that enzyme broke that substrate into two different products. And so now we call this the enzyme product complex, and then eventually the products are going to leave the active site. And this enzyme is, like I said, ready to be reused again for another reaction. So that, in a nutshell, is how enzymes work. A very short video. You do have a very small homework assignment, um, so you can do a happy dance about a small homework assignment. Research just three enzymes in the human body and be prepared to explain their names and what they do for us.